how are you? I actually already um, filmed this earlier, uh, earlier this week, actually very early, early this week. Maybe you're new to this channel. Uh, hi. If you aren't aware, how I film the videos or reactions that I do for this season is every time a clip comes out, I bust out my phone and record myself, um, which obviously that's not the case right now. I'm using a semi-decent camera. Did you like that or does that make you really hate me? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go too much into detail about what goes on outside of this little box that you see me in. Last, last week, I went on vacation with my family and that kind of threw me in for a loop. Well, watching clips wasn't difficult for me. It was the filming part that was difficult for me. And so I just thought that I would refilm the entire thing and make one cohesive video uh, for episode three and episode four. The next three videos, I'm going to try to do them uh, in the system that I had going on before. Oh my God, there's a thing flying. Ah, oh, what is it? Oh, oh God, get away from me. Holy shit, insubordinate and churlish. Now I'm sweating. What was I saying again? I swear to God, I'm so, this heat and that bug from hell. At least my eyebrows look really good today. I would like to point out that for anyone who's watching Scum for the first time, um, or even if you're not watching Scum for the first time, if you don't know where to get links, where to watch the translated clips, Scum English is an excellent source. Certainly the videos that I'm about to watch and the ones that I incorporate into my videos, they're all from Scum English. However, if your preference is YouTube and watching the clips, the translated clips on YouTube, sup bus. Uh, go to their channel. They um, have been uploading translated clips religiously. If you know any other sources, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Maybe we can help someone out. I want to address this thing that uh, happened in the last episode and then people went to my comments and uh, started talking about how I had a few misunderstandings. The character Mari on the show and the person behind the show, Mari, who handles all the social media, I confused the two of them as one person they are not. And so yeah, that's cleared up. I get it now. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And then the other one about Evan quitting school. I'm I'm sorry. Um, the reason why I thought Evan quit school was because, I mean, it's this is really no fault towards the people who translated and the transcripts that I read. I think it was really just my own misunderstanding of the conversation. The translation said that Evan was talking about how, oh, am I just going to wait for you all day now and you go to work and stuff like that. And Isaac said something about how Evan needed to make an income, and it almost sounded to me like Evan was saying, or at least defending his position, of dropping out of school. So that's where my mind went, that's what happened there, that's cleared up, Evan's still in school, good. I kept thinking to myself like, oh my god, Yusuf, please look her way, and then you finally looked. I love how it has always been clear to us from the very beginning that we've been introduced into Sana's life how much trust is being put on her by her mother. I don't know, I feel like that puts a lot of pressure on Sana and like a part of me at present time kind of thinks about how maybe is her mother doing that so that Sana is pressured into this situation? Is her mother really that manipula manipulative? Am I stupid? I love this fucking song. I remember listening to this song a little while back and thinking that, yes, this is the song that's gonna play at my wedding. If you've ever like just sat in a corner and tried to picture your life with a person that you love forever and ever, and just like picturing that against, with a backdrop of like, I don't know, the sunset or um, a mechanical bull. I don't know, what's romantic to you? No judgment. This was my soundtrack. This song, Kiss Me by Ed Sheeran. So hearing it here, <laughs> and eating my hair. Hi. 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 For someone so honest about a person's carrot peeling skills, you sure like to beat around the bush when it comes to Sana. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I thought that that joke would make would make a lot more sense before I said it. But I know, I know why he doesn't like just go out there and pounce. I mean, there are very clear reasons and boundaries that Sana has set. Not even her personally, but just the fact that she subscribes to a religion that sets those boundaries for her, and she's she happily complies to them. Um, 
anyway, I can't believe I just told a joke and then like <laughs> found it problematic and tried to correct myself. I mean me. That's that's me. Hi, you're welcome. Nice to introduce me to you. What? Okay, that's it. I can draw the fella. Okay. First of all, I peel carrots the way that Sana does. The best way to peel a carrot is this way. With a peeler, even with potatoes. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's just better. But I like how, on some level, he's also talking about how Sana needs to be less guarded and let people in. I don't know. I feel like that's just. Nice touch, bitch! No problem, is that? Oh. That's me whenever I like someone, whatever they do. They could fart into a microphone and I'd be like, wow. Oh. Are you a baby again? So, it's great, I am eating. As if he couldn't be more perfect. Not everyone likes kids. I'm just saying. Two, what's that? Two. Two barn. How many is it you have? Two. He wants a fucking K pop group. I'm sorry, but haven't they moved on to another carrot? Like, they should both go to jail for, like, murdering that thing. Look at it! It's so skinny! What are you gonna eat out of that carrot? You've peeled it down to its core! This is bothering me more than it should! <laughs> Elias is the worst fucking wingman. Speaking of Elias, I, uh... It's probably too early to do this. Again, jumbled mess. But I think I owe Elias an apology. Um, Elias, you're cool, man. I um, misjudged you. You have your moments. I still think you're a dick. And since we're on the subject of like people that I thought were dicks but are actually okay, I finally finished watching all of season two, for those of you wondering. I didn't bother filming it um, because... I don't know, I didn't really enjoy that season to begin with, so there really was no point for me to just sit down and completely obliterate Vinium. But then again, after finishing the season, like, I get it. Um, I understand that Vinium has gone through a lot of shit in his life, and, I mean, I expected as much, though. I, That's what I'm saying, and that's also the reason why, to this day, uh, season two remains my least favorite season, even after finishing it, of Scum. Um, and that's not to say that it's a bad season. I'm just saying that compared to all of the other seasons, this is the weakest one, just because it's the most predictable, and in my in my opinion, the most boring. Not to say that predictable is bad, I find that even if something is predictable, you have a predictable plot, it all relies now on execution. Like, there's still a way to make cliché okay. <sighs> uh, but I will say this, like, Vinny wasn't as bad as I thought he was, but I'm still, I still stand by the fact that he's He's an asshole still, though, yeah? Because everyone has their own problems. But they can still manage to be nice. And I get it, like, they're not supposed to be perfect people, they're not supposed to be role models. But some people are a little less problematic. I hate that word, but you know what I mean? Some people are a little less problematic than others. By the way, season four is shaping up to be my favorite fucking season of the entire show so far. I was waiting for this. I was waiting for him to make the next fucking move. Because, bitch, you're right. She didn't reply. What were you gonna do about that, Yusef? Send her a really fucking obvious message that I got hurt. I got hurt. Sana? What I love about this scene is about how it follows the entire fucking enumeration that Sana talked about in her how to be cool and how to have the best Rusbas discussion. Uh, in season one. Um, a wonderful, wonderful person that I've been speaking to frequently on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna call her out. Her name's Stephanie. Hey girl, what's up? She talked to me about the theory that's been circulating through the fandom, which is that the whole thing with the trailer for season four doesn't just talk about what the events that are to transpire in season four. It talks about how everything has already been set in motion since season one to present. And what will be revealed in season four is apparently how Sana was behind everything. Like how she had heavy involvement in the way that the plot develops for each of the leads. Yeah, that's an issue. 25 girls in one bus. This is interesting. Um, the same friend 
who I'm talking to frequently about scum on Instagram. Stephanie, what's up, girl? She explained to me that there are several different accents that exist in or dialects actually that exist in Norway. It's kind of the same here too in the Philippines. The accents kind of explain a lot about where this person or this individual is from. And um, I also read something similar to this before uh, regarding Evan and Isaac and how Evan's um, accent is a little bit more posh which indicates his upbringing and being a bit more higher middle class whereas Isaac speaks the more Streets? Streets? I don't know. So my wonderful friend explained to me that Vilde here is actually trying very hard to emulate another accent that isn't her own so as not to give away where she's from and what kind of upbringing she experienced. And that can also explain why her mom is always having a wine night and why her friends can never come over. It kind of maybe symbolizes the shame that she feels for where she's from. Did you take a stool for that? Do you, yeah? For this scene, I wrote a whole thing on Tumblr about how this scene made me feel and why it worried me so much. Um, <laughs> it's pretty bad. That thing, um, Shalmuta, that was written on Sana's locker, that was introduced in uh, season two. I kind of had this theory that maybe Evan was the one who did that. Um, the reason why I thought it was Evan, or why I maybe I kind of still think that it's Evan, is for the following reasons. Even before someone wrote Shalmuta on her locker, she was already getting these invasive comments on her Instagram, just repeatedly the word slut. The user's name was um, Ala9735, I think, because Elias's birthday is March 5, 1997. But, eh. Why would Elias name himself Ala? 9735. You know what I mean? Like he's not exactly the most religious of the group. Then it wouldn't really match the timeline because for Evan to have done something like that, I would imagine that he was going through some sort of manic episode. So the only events that would overlap would be the fact that Evan was probably already hanging out with uh, the Azabakan boys. But yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. I must point out that if there ever was a person that looked more like a fucking prince, the prince of denim himself. Okay. Did you see that? I love how the looks exchanged between Sana and Evan spoke volumes, even more so than the dialogue. Um, and since we're at this scene, I might as well introduce the other theory that I was talking about, which is kind of like... It was introduced to me and then I contributed to it. Again, Stephanie, another shout out, here you go. She talked to me about how Evan and Sanak, their secret connection goes a lot more deeper than Mikael and the Baka boys. That it could have also possibly been because these two were romantically connected in the past. And I completely bought that, 100%. It made so much sense to me. I mean, clearly now that that theory is debunked, I'm, I'm great about that being debunked because my mind was going in deep dark places. I know that Evan can be a bit aggressive when it comes to people that he's interested in, so I kind of thought that maybe in some way he crossed the line with Sana. First time, I have checked on the budget of theirs and seen that they are more disposable. One thing that I want to point out in the scene is the fact that Vilda was so out of shot for all of it. And then after the scene, Vilde updated her Instagram with a photo of everyone in the meeting. And then she cut out, <laughs> cut out Sana because mature. Also, just that I had like some festing and drinking. Then I have to ask her since you are Muslim, what do you think about drinking? She was dying to ask that question since the moment she took off her shoes. Let me bet. Should I just sing this in my next family reunion, or...? So I already recorded this part, the last part, but now I have to re-record a 
again because this fucking thing stopped recording. Basically, what I said uh, was that I was very happy with this episode. And also, I quoted John Green for the way that I felt when, uh, or the way that I felt Sana felt as well. You trust a floor. You wake up in the morning, you don't even look down anymore because you know that the floor is just always going to be there. And this scene where Yusuf was like, oh, I'm not really Muslim. It's kind of like the floor just disappearing. Uh, again, if you have watched up to this point, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. My enjoyed. Anyways, this has been Noah. And uh, I'll see you guys again in the next video, which should be shortly after this one. And then the next one after that. Then the next one after that. And then the next one after that.